In this video we're going to have a look at version 2 of the Panel Pilot Ace Design Studio software um, which was recently put live on the panelpilot.com website. Um, so anyone who is using the previous version we'd recommend that you upgrade soon. There's no charge, it's free to use as with the previous version. Um, and we've added a number of um, new features um, for you to use within your projects. Um, so if you visit the download section of panelpilot.com um, you can see here is the button to begin the download. Um, rather than going through that during this video I will um, jump straight to the software. Um, you'll notice the getting started page hasn't changed at all yet. In fact the first thing you'll notice that has changed is that we've added a number of new templates. So templates were something that um, a lot of people came back to us and said that they found them really useful even though we were we only had a handful of them at the beginning of um, when we launched the original software so we've added um, we've more than doubled the number of templates that we have um, and we find that these are useful for people who are not familiar with the software or would like to um, get started and they can form good building blocks or foundations for a project so you can discard the bits that you don't need or add extra things over and above um, what we've already got there. So just to talk you through the new features I'm going to open up this um, power meter template that we have. Um, so one of the headline um, functions that we've added is a mass builder. Um, this allows us to make calculations within the software. Um, in this instance it's a fairly simple one. Um, what we're doing is uh, calculating the or multiplying the two analog inputs that we have coming in to create a power reading. So you can see up here in the top right hand corner as with all um, of our functions in the software. You don't need to write any code. All of the um, the creation of this expression is through drop downs. Um, so you can see here if I select one of them, um, in this case this is the um, the voltage input. You can see we select that down here from this drop down. So we choose the voltage display and then we choose the property of that voltage display that we want to use. Um, in most cases and in this case it's the scaled analog input value that we want to use. We've got a multiplication and there's various other operators that we have here available for you to use. Um, I've just cleared that one. And then the second part of the expression of course is to um, put the current display and the scaled analog voltage. So that opens up a whole load of um, power to people who are using um, multiple inputs or even just um, looking to increment or decrement um, numbers within their projects. So this brings us on to the properties builder, sorry the properties trigger. Now this used to be called the hardware trigger in the previous version of the software um, and a lot of the functionality of it is very similar uh, however we've added some extra options for you to, to be able to um, effectively make it a more powerful tool. So I'm just going to go down here and select one of the ones that we've already created. Now in this instance the property trigger is working as a hardware trigger and the way that the hardware trigger works or worked is that it would look at an analog or a digital input and if any change occurred on that input um, it would trigger an action. Now with the properties trigger it's it's fairly similar the, the the key difference is that rather than restricting you to only looking at hardware elements we now are able to look at any property within a project so for example we could change this from a this in this instance it's an analog input we could change that to a touchscreen button that we've got set up and that would then trigger an action to happen whenever that button was pressed the other thing that's changed since the um, original hardware trigger is that you're able to now schedule more than one action. So um, we can set, we can keep adding um, more actions um, which will run sequentially um, after the trigger um, is triggered. The next thing I want to talk about is the logic builder. Now this has the same name as it did previously. 
Um, however, again, it's had um, some extra functionality added to it. And the main difference between this and the previous version is um, you can now create multiple statements within one logic builder. Now, in the previous version, um, you could only create one statement. So um, in coding term, it was an if statement. Uh, with the new logic builder, it's now an if-else statement. So it allows you to um, check for a number of different expressions and run a, a particular action as you come across the first of those, which is true. So it will run through them. And you can see down here at the bottom, um, there's a default action for if none of the statements are true, it will run a kind of um, de facto um, default um, action. Um, a number of other library elements that we've added. Um, I'm not going to go into RS232 today. Um, this is something there is now a, um, a how-to guide up on the website for that. So if it's something that you're looking to get use, make use of, um, the serial interfacing element, um, have a, have a look at that guide. Um, my colleague is also working on a video at the moment um, which will probably be a series of, of, of tutorials um, which will include the RS-232 um, functionality. I will just touch on a couple of these um, new library elements. A number of graphic effects um, allow you to blur different blur or colorize or create a drop shadow um, on different graphical elements. And the other thing to, to note is that we've also added a number of new meter styles. So I'm just going to clear this screen and get a new one. And I'll show you some of the new um, default meters that we have. So you can see down here on the left hand side, um, if you hover over any of these, um, it gives you a little preview. Um, double click and that will add that to your project. So um, as I say, we've created probably another half dozen of these um, to use. Um, and it's fairly simple to build up a um, application just using a number of these, um, these building blocks. Um, I'm just going to put the tank with display on. And so you can see, I mean, I will just we'll go onto the emulator now. And you can see We've got that bar meter down at the bottom working. You can see the battery meter at the top and the tank meter working there. So you can adapt those um, for your projects depending on how you're looking to use them. A couple of other things just to touch on. Um, we've uh, variables in the previous version of the software. Um, there's now an extra option on them to make them persistent and this means that they're saved to non-volatile memory um, even during a power out or a reset of the display um, so it's worth noting that just allows you to, to remember settings or variables um, over a period of time uh, if you've got any questions, um, obviously any features that you would like to see, any comments, please um, put them in the comments section of this video. Um, we welcome all the feedback we can get. Um, as I say, keep an eye out um, over the next week or so. There'll be um, some tutorial videos going up, one um, showing a lot of these features um, built into a tear meter. And we'll probably use that same um, same project um, to, to show and demonstrate how to use the serial functionality.